you so much for coming. Uh, I would like to uh, say some things about Zinc. Uh, this is basically our innovation center. Uh, we host the space for entrepreneurs uh, to motivate them and inspire them. And uh, we try to make them do something great every day. Uh, we host these workshops, such as uh, Kilmetain. Uh, today's uh, subject is about innovation in the food industry. Uh, which is extremely important to this competitive market today, the Kuwait. And uh, I would just want to say thank you so much for coming. And I'm uh, handing it over to Kimitain. Uh Thank you for joining me here today. So to start off, can you briefly talk to us about where you are currently in your present uh, career paths? Starting with Faisal. <laughs> Test. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for being here. Uh, briefly, uh, I'm the director of culinary development at uh, Makan. Uh, I'm the co-owner as well. We have uh, three different partners as well, everybody running uh, different segments in the company. Uh, I'm the one in charge of all FMB operation, uh, from development to research to quality control uh, to uh, yeah, any f everything, um, and as well operations. Uh, we run multiple uh, outlets. We have uh, Al Makan, which is Street Al Makan in uh, uh, Kuwait City. We have Table Auto, which is as well in, in Kuwait City, which is in Al Shahid Park. Uh, we have Pam and Cow. It's a delivery concept. It's a burger, uh, burger and fries based concept. We have Street Cafe uh, in Marcus Abdullah Salim, uh, the museum, cultural uh, museum, and as well we have Street Ice Cream, which is as well in Marcus Abdullah Salim, uh, serving ice creams and smoothies and juices. In general, that's basically me in a nutshell. Thank you. Fajr? Thank you. Thanks, Faisal. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Khali Jask and Zinc for setting this uh, lovely uh, talk uh, tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, basically, um, what is business development in, in, in PrepLine? Uh, PrepLine is a FNB incubator, I'd like to say. Uh, based here in Kuwait, and we have offices uh, all over uh, the GCC, including Qatar, Oman, uh, Saudi, uh, Emirat. We started off by uh, having clients come up to us and uh, come to Kuwait to see the, all the original concepts and all the creativity going on in yeah. Kuwait. It, it became a food hub, I don't know. The prep line is جمع كل ال uh, segments that go into FNB. Uh, so as a business development director, we do everything from concept creation to branding and design to uh, kitchen uh, engineering, menu engineering, and we hold your hands throughout the whole process. حتى عقب الopening يعني we're there uh, with you step by step. ف right now we are working on projects. In uh, Saudi, Qatar, Nafs Magalit, all over the GCC. In Kuwait, we uh, also have established brands like uh, Jar, Chewy Gooey, uh, Real Veal Burger, uh, Chicken, Aromi, and uh, a few other concepts. But uh, basically, that's business development in, uh, in PrepLine. Thank you. Thanks for coming today. Thank you for spending time with us. My name is um, Dr. Radia Amiri. Uh, I'm senior dietitian of uh, Numu and uh, Core. Um, we are a company providing healthy uh, meals, um, dietary healthy meals. We have uh, Numu, which is most, the mostly healthy uh, diet for losing weight and gaining weight and um, other uh, medical um, uh, conditions. And we have Core, which is athletic uh, programming. Um, uh, I, I'm a um, postgraduate doctorate from uh, London, which I, when I come back, uh, I wanted to open a business same as uh, Numu. Like a, uh, Numu is, is the, the meaning of Numu is growth. It means that we, want the, we wanted to open something. It means growth in all aspects, uh, like environmentally friendly things, uh, in organic f food and ingredients we wanted to use. We wanted to have meal plan uh, company, but we wanted to have it in a, in a, in a different way, different aspects. Um, not same as something that was 
was here was something that we were we were like dreaming for something uh, bigger. Um, the owners of these companies has also gym, so we combined the things of um, gym and healthy healthy diet. Um, and also we have our new brand uh, core, which is uh, for athletic uh, uh, programs. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so let's just get into it. Under the umbrella theme of uh, innovation, sorry. So under the umbrella theme of innovation in one's industry, what creative endeavors and output are El Makan, Prepline, and Nimu contributing to the F&B market? So to the average consumer in Kuwait, what else are you bringing to the table? Uh, it, 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 of course, it differs from every concept to another. Uh, and I, I believe every uh, business model has a different, let's say, uh, yani, uh, aim or endeavor that they, they follow. Um, uh, in general, like uh, for us personally, it's, um, uh, it's basically elevating a certain standard that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. We started with one aim um, as a company to uh, bring forth something that has never been done before. And when we talk about this, um, usually people get uh, confused about uh, uh, you know, uh, the standards. When we say we want to you know, um, uh, redevelop the standards of dining in Kuwait, everybody links it to to Michelin star restaurants, or they link it to fine dining, and they link it to you know um, uh, upper scale uh, standards. But when we say redefining specific standards, it's mainly about um, bringing something new to the table, uh, bringing new cuisines to the table, mm -hmm. bringing a new understanding to the table as well. Um, when we started the restaurant four years ago, uh, one of the major issues that we had to face was um, understanding the client's mentality. Um, our restaurant is a very undefined cuisine. Mm -hmm. Of course, if we put it all together, it's, it's, a, it's a Korean American restaurant. But again, it was a representation of a chef. And I believe that was one of the major issues that restaurants had to face. Uh, because being in the creative field, you, it's, it's very hard to be accepted into society. So when we started the restaurant, it was, it was, it was more like an artist putting, uh, you know, his, his reputation and character, you know, to reveal to people. And we created the menu to reveal me as a person. I did not like seafood, so I did not have seafood on the menu. Right. So people, to, to some extent, they, it was very hard to digest this mm -hmm. issue. Um, and, I, uh, you know, and it was very hard to discuss this, uh, this concept to people, saying that it's a representation of, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, represent a representation of a chef's mentality rather than a consumer base. Uh, I wanted to represent what I felt, uh, you know, uh, very nostalgic. We had a lot of, uh, you know, play in nostalgia. Uh, one of the dishes I remember for Khalid Jask, actually we did. Mm -hmm. One of the first events was, uh, it was a pop event, and I remember we, we did Barad um, uh, Sandwich. And we literally redid, redeveloped that on our, uh, you know, on our, on our own. We made the actual biscuit, we had holes, we poked holes with the spaghetti. You know, um, and we had the ice cream in the middle, um, and it was just the play of nostalgia. So that was very interesting for people, you know, right. to see. So it's just all in all, it was just um, trying to um, elevate a specific thinking mm -hmm. that we, I, I personally believed was missing in this industry, mm -hmm. and to me, that is redefining a certain cuisine or mm -hmm. uh, redefining a certain standard. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, a huge plate with like three dots in the middle. Um, you know, as a fine dining restaurant to, to say that we're defining the cuisine. Not, not really. It's, uh, people never knew what uh, Korean cuisine was. So we kind of had to slowly um, uh, make it understandable. We had to kind of uh, do it in a certain way. Okay, if, you, if they don't know what kimchi is, I'll just put it in a fried chicken. You know, the, that might be an easier way for them to digest it. So, uh, so again, uh, as, as a company, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a whole, this is our main aim, mm -hmm. and uh, this is our future endeavor. We are planning to become, and uh, again, this is my aim as a chef. I am planning to come, to become, uh, you know, uh, 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 a, a shift, um, you know, a, a shift in history between right. um, past and present. Okay. So cross cultural, basically. Exactly. And it's an intersection in time, and who Faisal is in a space like Kuwait in a global environment. Yes, That's correct. Excellent. Correct. So moving on to Fajr, innovation. Thank you. <laughs> innovation uh, uh, in terms of prep line. I completely agree with. Does this work? I completely agree with Faisal on elevating the the customer experience, uh, elevating the experience as a whole in every restaurant. Minahiyat, the fusion of food that has 
uh, happened nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also, when I think about PrepLine, I think what differentiates us from uh, other incubators in the market is, uh, I think, two things. Um, number one being, uh, we're basically bringing a group of individuals من كل مكان بالعالم. كل واحد مختص بشيء. We're putting them all together in one room to focus on one ultimate dining experience, uh, whether dining or to go. Uh, it's crazy when you think about it. عندنا ناس من كل أنحاء العالم يايين together in Kuwait. Uh, people from America, people from uh, London, from Greece, from everywhere uh, to to come to Kuwait to create a restaurant in the Middle East. فقاعد يصير شيء وايد حلو بالميدل ايست اللي it's not just on an international standard الحين خلاص everyone in the middle east is well traveled we're all well educated نحب السفر يعني اكثر ناس سافرون بال بالعالم اتوقع الخليجيين فمن ناحيه food experience خلاص this is something that needs to come to the table يعني especially in Kuwait يعني ما ادري شلون احنا صرنا الهب بالخليج يون حقنا حق الاوريجينال كونسبت سو براندنج اند ديزاين اند كذي اول ذيز ليتل ديتيلز ذات جو انتو كونسبتس اي فيل لايك بريب لاين ريلي هاز ا سترونج جراسب على هالشيء بيكوز اوف اول ذا ديفرنت تالنتس ذات وير اوبن تو اند وي كولابريت وذ يعني انا وراضيه قاعد نسولف قبل التوك وقاعد اقول لها ام بوي اي نيد تو كولابريت وذ يو فور ا هيلثي مينيو ذات وير وركينج اون وهي نيوتريشنست فانت بتسوين لي الريسيبيز خلاص Uh, number two, I think, is what differentiates us too is uh, the clients that come to us and we work with. Uh, we have people again coming to us from all over the GCC, and um, yeah, these are people with passions and they've been foodies their whole lives. They just don't know how to start their journey, they don't know how to start what kind of concept they want. They're into so many different concepts. Uh, and they have a budget and they come to us and يعني, uh, we will work with you either as uh, consultants, uh, whether you're an existing brand or you want to start a brand from scratch, uh, we will hold your hand and walk you through the process. But I think definitely these are two things. يعني, uh, why it, it's very different than a client who doesn't really care, who just wants a restaurant. Uh, doesn't really care about the ingredients, the recipes, the staff, the service, uh, what goes into the kitchen, يعني, uh, kitchen layout, uh, they don't even have a plan for after opening. In PrepLine, we make sure that uh, the concepts that we're establishing are not just going to open and be a hit or a trend, that you're also going to exist and, and succeed and grow in this يعني ever evolving and competitive industry. You know? Thank you. Very elaborative. Um, so you stand as a platform as PrepLine? Basically, yes. For innovators and creative thinkers in the food industry? Yes. Perfect. Bajir? Um, the oh, sorry. Bajir, uh, Rabia. Rabia. Don't worry, don't worry. The, the, the name is too difficult to try <laughs> <laughs> It's a beautiful name. <laughs> yeah, as Bajir said, mashallah, we are in a country that's um, People are not just like, a, if you ask every single person, even if a kid, asking a kid that how many places you've been in your life, how many countries you, you visited. Um, we are, alhamdulillah, in a country that we're going to so many places. So we're trying different cuisines, different things. So our expectation is getting high. So um, uh, I remember uh, when I was in my um, degree um, status in, uh, in a really small city in the UK, of course, you know, at Liverpool. When um, I was sitting with some of the chefs and we were doing some menus and uh, food, uh, anything we were doing it, they were tasting it and they were like, yeah, nice, delicious, perfect. But well, here is, the concept is different. We are in a competitive status. We are in a, in a way that uh, people are picky about their food. Uh, they are picky about the food because it's nothing is stopping us. The affordability is there. All ingredients are there. And you think about it any time. تبون تروحون اي جمعيه تلاقون الفروت اللي تبونه الوقت اللي تبون بومجرانيت موجود مانجو موجود it doesn't matter it's not season anymore everything is available so بس انه comparing to the last 10 years 10 years if i comparing Kuwait 
the last 10 years because for too long I was not here. If I'm comparing it, people are more aware of health. Yani before I remember, and people were like, okay, I want to just lose مثلاً, three kilo, four kilo, five kilo. But it's, now it's not this concept anymore. And that's really good. And it's not, this is not this concept. People want to take the healthy food in terms of their lifestyle. They want to take it as lifestyle. They know that how food is affecting themselves in terms of like body performance, psychological thing, their mood, sleeping pattern, um, um, even like um, a job, how they perform, if they're feeling sleepy or not, I feel gases. Yani how could a person perform well at work if I'm feeling like sorry, bloated? So people are getting aware of health and how, how food is affecting them. So that's, that's really good. And who, who is the one that doesn't like to, to taste these lovely restaurants that they are mentioning? You are all in love with them. But um, we want to have, like um, in Numu, we wanted to have something for our busy life. Yani, I was telling Fajr, and uh, I'm, uh, yani, with all respect to Mr. Faisal, but, but I'm, I'm a, I cook well, I cook nice, but I don't have time for it. Yani, who has time and uh, cooking the food putting it in like lunch uh, uh, a bag and all the time carry it with yourself. So we are looking for something more matching our modern life. And I can have a box, a ryugi موجود غايدا, موجود عشاي, موجود خلاص. أدري إن شنو راح أكل. ما راح أفكر بكل ميل إن من وين أطلب ولا شنو أطلب ولا شنو أخذ. But um, at the same time, we wanted to be far away from the concept إن أكل الهيلثي معناته إن دياي مسلوق ما لأي طعم. شوية فلفل عليه وبروكلي. Uh, يعني كأن hospital, hospital food. No, it's not. We want it to be as nice as the, as the restaurants that you go and enjoy in your cheating days, but in a healthy way. So we made everything in-house. We made the, the bread in-house. Um, if you wanted to make the gluten-free, we made the gluten-free. Lactose-free, we made it. All the sauces, we made it in-house. So we, try, we opened something in Kuwait that healthy food, but nice and delicious. So it's not the healthy food that you're like, Ugh, okay, I'm going to tolerate it for two, three days. No, I'm going to have it for too long. I have some clients and now staying with, uh, with me more than nine months. This is becoming their, their, their habit. That's it. They are, they are doing it. And inshallah, we're going to open more, uh, more uh, branches in, uh, in uh, other countries of the uh, Khalij, inshallah. But and, um, re really looking forward to this concept to be more and more. Even in the restaurants, this is something that is very important. Before, when you go to a restaurant, you can see a different variety. There is no that much variety of it. There are not that much vegetables. Now, no, the concepts, even the vegetables, they're putting a lot of vegetables. Uh, it, it's not everything fried in these things. Even the fry, they're doing it in a like intelligent way. Right. The air fry thing is now a, a, a grilled thing. So alhamdulillah, we are, you know, we are going on the right track to, to reaching the states and manwajah white mashakil sahiya because we are not aware of uh, right. the healthy food. So we right. didn't want it to do it like healthy food by a boring way. Right. No, it's a, it's a nice uh, experience, but uh, at the same time, they would reach their target, whatever is their target. Mm. Is it medical issue? Is it losing weight, gaining weight, athlete, whatever it is. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Faisal, can you talk to us more about your mentorship program, The Right Plum? So basically the concept behind the program, the structure, the technicalities, and how can we register? And can you elaborate more on your gastronomy programs? Uh, that's very interesting. It's a, a very interesting question. Um, the ripe plum. The reason why I came up with the ripe plum was because I felt as an individual I had difficulties operating in my own, uh, you know, in my own field. Again, um, one, of the, one of the worst decisions that I believe I've made is not getting experience, you know. Uh, now the thing is, alhamdulillah, uh, we live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a wealthy country. The, the, uh, finances is always here, whether it's through investors, whether it's through banks, whether it's through any uh, kind. Getting experience uh, to Kuwaiti individuals is usually rare, you know. They don't really seek and getting in the, uh, like experience because they have the accessibility in opening up their own business. Now, ex uh, getting the experience is, is something ec extremely crucial that I believe that uh, yani I didn't get the chance to because there are many things that I never learned and I learned it the very hard way. Yani I oper operated my own restaurant uh, and I learned uh, you know, issues about baladiya, my own self. I learned the issues of how to act in certain situations my own self, you know, how to deal with suppliers, how to 
fix, uh, you know, if something breaks down, how to deal with uh, specific individuals, how to deal when you have a lot of staff and all of a sudden somebody runs out, you know, and never comes back. So these are things that I had to learn the hard way. Getting the experience, and uh, يعني, uh, alhamdulillah, I have, I, have, I have a good Kuwaiti team with me right now with Al Makan. And two of them, يعني, one left, but the other one is a Kuwaiti and she's been here working with me for more than two years right now. And I keep on telling her, يعني, I know in one point in time you will come to me and you will tell me that I want to start my own thing. And I said, if I was in your own shoes, I would literally do the same. But you have something great that I've never been uh, to, which is the experience. The right plum was mainly that. I have many people that signed up or send me emails every single day about getting the experience in the kitchen, you know, um, uh, wanting, wanting to work as a waitress, wanting to work as a waiter. Or, yeah, and it's always part time. And I can't really give that because Baladia laws, if you're not, if you're not fully, um, there is some small window that you can. But again, in general, it's very difficult. Uh, for them to work. So anyways, so the right plum, the whole point of it was that it's a workshop for these individuals that really wanted to become either a chef or wanted to become, you know, operated his own restaurant or any kind. So it's a workshop of two parts. It's a theory workshop where they attended like a three day um, a theoretical workshop, a presentation, in depth the, uh, presentation. And it's uh, for people that are really serious about, you know, uh, pursuing um, the uh, culinary, uh, you know, uh, future. So it was the theory, theoretical part, which is three days, and it's very intensive. It's uh, things, you know, talking in detail about what if, for example, you know, how to deal with your landlord. Because one day, Adi Saif, the, the building is so bad, they don't pay for the rent to Adi Karaba Tatfi. And they don't pay for, for electricity bills. So what's gonna happen if you have all your equipment is electrical? Manata, in, in the middle of service, you're gonna have to literally act. You can't tell your customers that I can't really serve you. So you have to have plan B's, you know? And so these are the details that I talked about, about suppliers, how you talk to suppliers, you know? How to deal with them, um, you know? Um, about maintenance, about hygiene, you know? The tafu al-kahraba, you have refrigerators, you have meat, you know, stored inside. You have chicken stored inside, what to deal with it, you know? So these are very detailed stuff that I had to, uh, you know, discuss with uh, the team members. And then it moves on to the practical workshop where I set up a pop-up fine dining restaurant, first of its kind, Bill Kuwait. It was, uh, six, uh, it was six days of a practical. And these individuals that signed up for the theoretical, they go into practical, where there are actual chefs. I, do, I did not utilize any of my chefs. They were the ones, طبعاً, few of them, يعني, never held a knife before, never in their life. Uh, I remember the scenario. Um, uh, at the second that they went in, I gave everybody uniforms, you know, and it was yeah, very proper. But, um, I, I, I went to the kitchen, I'm like, okay, guys, here's your knives, okay, be careful. Um, guys, I have to go one second, I have to get a paper. Wallah al I left for 20 seconds, I came back, chef, I cut my hand. And I'm like, okay, that's good. Now you know the reality, you know, now you know reality not to mess with things and, and to listen. These are the two most important things. And get lom hatta. Get lom, this is reality. When I talk to you, you tell me, yes, chef. If I say something, you say, yes, chef. At the Mu'adbik, I will swear, I will shout. This is reality. For, it's a three day thing. Half of the team are in the kitchen, and the other half are in the dining. So, I have um, amazing. Uh, raise your hand. <laughs> she was running our. Um, uh, uh, Nazreen was running our, our uh, dining uh, side. Mashallah, see, she has a very great background in, in uh, you know, restaurant management with the, in Le Cordon Bleu. So she was in charge of the dining and uh, in, in teaching, uh, you know, the, the, the staff um, how to deal with customers, you know. And it was very intriguing. When the, the, the customers sat down, uh, she trained them to the extent that every dish literally goes at the same second at the table, you know. So it was extremely... <laughs> Um, so it was for three days, and then the other three days we switch, you know, so everybody gets a rounded experience between both. So they left with an extreme amount, you know, of passion for this job, you know, for uh, pursuing their culinary degree, um, you know, and, and learning the reality of running a kitchen. It's not easy. I felt in a, I felt in I was so tired, I'm like, uh, and I don't think I'm going to continue the next five days. And I really doubted that everybody would join. Next day, I couldn't be in And then the third day and the fourth day, you know, until the six days. 
So everybody left, we were like a small family, it was very fun, uh, we had an amazing time. And the whole point of it was just to show, show that. And not everybody has the freedom in working in spaces, especially being a Kuwaiti. I worked in Lenotre in the past, I worked in Sheraton in the past, and one of the worst things that I hated was that when I drop something, I have other people picking it for, for me. And I hated that, don't touch me. Even in my Bilmakan, and my staff, when I, for example, I drop cream on the floor or whatever, and they go to, I'm, I push them away. I hate that. And now you are in the kitchen, you make a mess, you clean your mess. Yeah, and it's, there's no, I, I'm not a prince, you know? I, I might seem like I'm the owner of the company, but I'm not the and I'm the kitchen, I'm working with you guys, we're like a team. But it was just, oh, yeah, that was the whole point of this program, and, I, and why, mashallah, is that the A lot of people asked about continuing this part. Uh, Len, I believed that it was a great thing to have as a workshop. So, yeah. Perfect. Thank you for sharing those stories. Thank you. Um, Fajr, can you talk to us more um, about why you got involved with PrepLine? Can you give us success stories um, with uh, yeah. either personal ones that you've shared with the companies that you've incubated, so on? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I will show you. This is pretty awesome. This, yeah. this program is is really cool. Yeah, I, I think this. I think I really think this is what. يعني لما نقول innovation و elevating the experience in Kuwait, this is one of the entities or programs that really adds a touch to the Kuwaiti industry. يعني. والله my clients يعني clients ملوتنا قبل أن نبدي شغل معهم نجيبهم لكويت for three to four days. We give them a list of restaurants. مكان included. I'm not giving free food يعني بس. Uh, just, just to go and and see شنو يعني ليش المطاعم غير عن السعودية ليش المطاعم غير عن المطاعم اللي بقطر uh, what differentiates us and all the fancy restaurants that open up in Dubai the lounge, international lounges اللي يبونهم من برا is these little uh, يعني these uh, these programs that add يعني a beautiful touch to the community. ف... أنا, honestly I I never knew I was gonna start in FNB. I went to school for management specializing in entrepreneurship. Uh, I knew I wanted to study a little bit from يعني, each part in business. And uh, I was uh, friends with uh, يعني, the Bahbahani family. Fa I knew Isa, يعني, fra we go way back. Fa Gali, you're going to graduate and you're going to come back to Kuwait and you're going to work with me. And that's what I did. Fa Alhamdulillah, now it's been six years. Uh, uh, يعني, I graduated from school, I was working on JAR, uh, creation of JAR. I don't know what I was doing, but he brought me in and he was like, you're doing all the studies, and you're doing the business plan, and the competitive analysis, and you're going to position it in the market. And I started five years abroad in Kuwait. Honestly, the, the trust that the team gave me as soon as I came back, and how much they believed, يعني, Isa is a person who really, really believes in the youth, and um, whoever he collaborates with or brings in to work with the team, uh, he gives him full authority and trust over the concept. So it's, it's something really great. يعني, we had a team member join us, and he was asking Isa, he was like, why did you pick مثلا, this design company? And Isa looked at my coworker Fajr, and he was like, "Because Fajr decided, and Fajr had joined, like you know, for a month or two. Yeah. So the the trust that that we have from the, the the company, the incubator itself, is what pushes us uh, to to bring in that that difference, that extra touch that each of us wants to bring in. For for this one, the shade of the بدينا بجار واحنا قاعد نشتغل على جار اشتغلنا على تشوي قوي شويه تشوي قوي واز براند صار لها 10 سنين استابلشت بالكويت uh, everyone knows يعني the story about تشوي قوي i think everyone has a jar of cookies in their house اللي حاط فيه بهارات واللي حاط فيه مخلل واللي حاط فيه دراكي ف everyone has a تشوي قوي jar ف يعني working on all these concepts فهمنا ال فهمنا الماركت الكويتي فهمنا المستوى الماركت الكويتي قاعد يوصل له. Uh, so we decided we're now ready to go abroad and we launched PrepLine. Uh, it's been, uh, I want to say, يعني about two years now, اللي we've been really focused on the GCC market يعني. Uh, 
I have a couple of team members here who للحين, they focus on the Kuwaiti concepts. فاحنا, we work together uh, على الكويت وبرا الكويت. Uh, I think يعني, Jar is one of our ultimate success stories because literally Lisa Wok and just a bunch of students who graduated from the US and came back. Khalid Al Awadi did the interior. Uh, Aziz Al Mudaf did uh, the art that you see on the wall. Uh, I was in charge of يعني, being a brand manager, which was something very weird because ما كان في شيء اسمه brand manager. عندك uh, the operation manager, who, you know, who deals with the staff. Who, best, no one really cared about uh, the look, the feel, what you see when you enter, what you listen to, what you smell, what you hear. من من هالناحية هذه كل الجوانب دخلناها بجار. Uh, from the music, from the food, from the plating, the presentation, all the different chefs that we brought in to collaborate with. I think that this is one of the most important things that happens when we work on a concept of prep line. For example, now we're working on a, a Greek concept to open, inshallah, in, uh, soon in 2019 in Jeddah. And uh, we brought in a chef from uh, Greece, Chef Stam, and he was actually on the opening team of La Petit Maison in Dubai. So, يعني, uh, we, we, we match the, the client with his needs, and we customize each proposal to each of our client's needs. But I think that's also a great thing that happens uh, in, in our incubator. Uh, so, yeah, I think... Thank you. A lot of personal insights. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, you're welcome. Uh, Radia, similar question. What yeah. interested you in this line of work, specifically the dietary needs of the Kuwaiti people, and how do you see yourself moving forward, yourself, career-wise within this industry, the dietary industry? Um, um, I wanted to mention this point, but I was just all the time thinking, in, uh, is one of my clients one day would listen to one of these videos or not because uh, I've been to this field about dietetics thingies because uh, to be honest I all the time was a chubby chubby year when I was like in my like uh, in my when I was 10 or 12 years old <laughs> yeah so I, wa I was thinking and uh, I need to do something to keeping me uh, or like um, giving me the the feeling that feeling like embarrassed that I gain more weight. And I was like, I need to be dietetics. Because if I'm being dietitian, then I can't be chubby. <laughs> I can't be like <laughs> gain weight, okay? As a, or like gaining weight without any reason. Because then people wouldn't listen to me. They were like, if you know what you want to do in your life, you wouldn't be in this way. Or in like in a way that I would suffer from um, health issues that the reason for it is food. Because I like in really young, um, age i've noticed that i was telling Roger, i've noticed that i have ips so i was thinking and um okay i need to put like barrier for myself and barrier was that this is supposed to be my career this is supposed to be my work this is supposed to be the thing that i every day going to practice it uh, what bring me to Nomo was that um, when I was in, in London, I was working in uh, Royal Hospital as a senior dietitian. And at the same time, our training was in Cad Cadbury. So, you know, when you come to this um, really nice room, you don't know what people been through pain to design it in this way. Because you just come in it, and it's nice and designed and everything. So that was my feeling when I was in Royal Hospital of UK or when I was in Cadbury. I was thinking, OK, everything is going all right. Um, I, without any reason. There is no big managers behind it. There is no big mind about it. It's going smooth. Everything is all right. When I came back to Kuwait, when first I, uh, since first day I've seen Ahmed Al-Matruk, um, he was like, uh, are you ready for getting this challenge? And I was like, what challenge going to be more than a, a baby? Or like I was 15 years old when I started to living in UK by myself. I was like, what's the challenge going to be? Bad ma dashtayna al matbakh fa hamt shunu yani hal challenge. Exactly as he's saying. Uh, one day, if an operation ma kan yamshi, how the clients is go are going to get food, their food. Early morning, they want to get receive their box. What are we going to do with it? Okay, customer service thingies, you know that how picky people are and how they've been through good experiences, so their expectation is too high. You need to provide the best service for them. 
So it was not easy to maintain it. In the, it was not easy to start it. It was not easy in uh, we had shifts from different places. We, we had like different cuisines, Turkish cuisine, Asian cuisines, American cuisine, different cuisines. So in these cuisines, we needed like different chefs coming from different places. والله شفت هو مثلا واصل خلينا نفترض يومين واصل مثلا من يونان او واصل من مكان معين فبعدها هيز نوت سيتل داون ان كويت هيز منتاليتي هيز مايند از نوت ريدي فور جيتنج ذيس تشالنجز اند ذيس ثينجز يو نيد تو كو اب وذ بيبلز بيرسونال لايف اند ذير بروفيشنال لايف يو كانت اغنور ذير بيرسونال لايف يو نيد تو بي ان ات يو نيد تو بوت يور سيلف ان ات سو هاو وركينج از ا تيم هاو لايك هاو تو انديرستاندينج اند توليريتينج اند ريسبكتينج ايتش اذر It was not easy at all. Alhamdulillah, we could like, alhamdulillah, we grown up together, like we're doing this business together. And, and um, it's like uh, with the starting with really n small number of uh, clients. Like I remember when I joined, we had 70 clients. And uh, today, alhamdulillah, the number that we're using, today the, when I left the, the office, the number that I uh, used for last client was 2,900. So that's, that's a thing, and you think they are your babies. You know what I mean? You take care about them. And I remember my friend, this doesn't like caramelized onion. I remember this has a sensitivity to something else. I I gather them because it's not easy to serving picky, picky eaters. And in Kuwait, we have a lot yeah. of picky eaters. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I remember that Numu, they sent me a box of sample that I had to post about. No, no, but I remember one of the things that uh, Numu uh, was different than anybody else was that uh, the quality of food was completely different. Uh, it, I, I, I've, been, I've been facing losing and gaining weight for the past, I would say, 15 years. If, uh, I remember Numu was the only diet company that uh, tasted good. يعني it wasn't like normal food. It was really good. I had good. a vegan pasta. وما كنت أدري إنها vegan. She just told, it was it not gluten vegan. Free. Gluten free. Gluten free. Gluten free. ما توقع. لا لا it was. I remember uh, a very good thing. You know that you are providing to people fresh at at the spot um, uh, serving. We are doing it in a way that we don't want to use any preservative um, um, uh, ingredients, ingredients yeah. on it. And at the same time, we wanted to be uh, the avocado. You know how avocado, for Sla. example, is difficult. How Sla. apple, mm. a chopped apple, is difficult to take any, yani, to keeping its color and yeah. to keeping its quality. So um, taking all this and suspect, yani, any people same as you guys that you've been through these things, you could understand that how difficult it is. Sla. Alhamdulillah, we all like came across of it. Khalas, we we. Uh, yeah, amazing, amazing work. But I have to eat it alone. My, my, <laughs> my customers see me eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask all of you semi-personal questions, if you don't mind. Starting with you, Faisal. Why a degree in photography and film to please your family before you've delved into culinary studies? Uh, okay. I'm going to tell you about the culinary arts and how I got my degree. It's a long story. But anyways, my, my dad used to work in, in, in London uh, when I was in high school. صار شغلة طبعا I always call this fate لأن things happen and you never يعني see the outcome of it يعني until like years to come فشغلة صارت يعني in London I was traumatized I I never left home literally never left home يعني كنت رايح high school ف فكان دربي الجامعة سوري المدرسة ورد مدرسة ورد يعني حتى ما كنت أركب tubes ما كنت أركب أروح تكاسي ولا شيء تكاسي سوري بس ما كنت أركب buses nothing فطبعا بالبيت امي يعني بي بي سي فود ف ات واز ليترلي اون 24/7 لان يعني شي هاوس وايف ما بعرف شيء ثانك يو تو هير ذا اوف كورس اوف كورس امي فور موست يعني كلها بايقه يعني وصفاتها تقول لي بتاخذ برسنتج قاعد تصور تدري تصور حق امي كلها تزفني تقول لي تاخذ وصفاتي ما تعطيني برسنتج بس اني واي سو سو اي ونت تو تيك يعني اي ونت تو برسو ا كونري ديجري باك ذن ذا واز 2000 Six, way back. تخرجت من المدرسة ورديت الكويت قدمت على تعليم العالي. I wanted to look for the culinary degree. طبعا it's non-existent. ما كشي اسمه culinary degree. Nothing at all. وطبعا أبوي سمع فأبوي دق علي وهو بلندن دق علي ولا يقول لي فيصل أنا بنصحك نصيحة. مو لأن أنا طبعا my my parents are extreme supporters of my work and ما عندهم إنه والله إنه لا you have to work this or that لا لا they're from day one. فأبوي دق علي ولا يقول لي أنا نصيحة بس think about what you're gonna do and think about the degree I recommend that you go into علام الأقل شهادة معترف فيها 
يعني ذات ليتر يقول لا سمح الله يقول انت بعدين اذا اشتغلت ويمكن ليت سي مليت وات ار يو جونا دو؟ فات ليست تيك ا ديجري وبعدين عقبها خلص روح ما يخالف روح بس انه تيك ا ديجري اكزاكتلي يعني شوفي اي اندرستود ذا ريليفنت ليتر نوت ات ذا ستارت اتس ا كريتيف اكزاكتلي اي نو اي واز جونا جو انتو كريتيفيتي بس نوت ريلي ذات ف طبعا قلت له اوكي صح كلامك فخلاص يعني انا مو عنيد فقدمت اي لوكت فور ذا ليست اي دونت نو وات اي ونتد فذا فيرست اوبشن اي لوكت طلع لي فيلم فصار فيني الحين اذكر الفتره انا اي واز لوكينج ات ذا بيبر ام لايك همم فيلم انا احب سينما خلنا اسجل على الفيلم ليترلي ذات واز ماي ديسيجن فاهم اوكي فيلم فنقيت كذي نمبر 2 واز ما ادري شنو نمبر 3 واز جرافيك ديزاين ف تشيك بوم انا قبلت فيلم اي واز جوينج تو شو اسمه تو اريزونا I went there the first semester. They go to the first semester of the Tahabi. They said, by the way, you're going to get the money from it. You have to go. And then I applied. I was like, okay, where should I go? Hmm, Miami sounds cool. Okay, let me go. It's sunshine. I went to Miami. When I was there, I, I, was, in a, I was a film student. They said, the film course is very short. You can't really get a degree in film. You have to double major. I got into the list. I'm like, okay, what does what sounds interesting? Photography. Okay, sounds good. I said photography, and I got accepted for photography. I'm a double major now, a student in, يعني film and photography, in Miami. And طبعا Miami is is literally a melt, يعني a melting pot of cultures. وتوقع لأنك توايد فاضي ولأن ما عندي شغل وكلاساتي كانت literally سينما كنا نروح سينما نشوف أفلام. فا I believe لأن I was so free كنت أطبخ حق شاب رمضان. I always used to cook. I used to go, I uh, experience different dining experiences, and literally from there on, I knew that this is what I wanted to do uh, with cooking. I loved the vibrancy of food. Literally, now I'm gonna pursue mine. So that's the whole story, the story of Perfect. it. Perfect, yeah. yeah. So and now it's relevant. Yeah, now, yeah. honestly, if it wasn't for photography and film, mm. I'm the one that's in charge of all or all our social media. There actually, you go. Instagram yeah. accounts, photography, the videographies that we do. Very hands on. Exactly, it's Great. very hands on. Yeah. And the relation when I graduated, yeah. not really at the point. Yeah, and a place like Miami. Sorry. Right, the intersection of cultures there probably helps you. Yeah, project that here. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, I learned a lot, especially the vibrancy of the place, from food to mm. culture to people to everything. Perfect. Thank you. هو قال شيء وايد مهم that everyone who wants to get into the food industry should always يعني always always keep in mind is لأن إحنا يعني we live بالخليج أو بالكويت we're used to شوية things being done for us especially at a restaurant من ناحية service وايد مهم إن الشخص يكون hands on مع الكونسبت ماله يعني احنا incubator at the end of the day and we end up doing concepts for other people but we end up being investors and partners in that concept why it makes a difference whether or not the the, the owner is hands on يعني why it's uh, whether it's with the, the, the recipes or menus or the social media it's very important for him and the basma kill كل بارت من البزنس لان اي ثينك ذاتس وات ديفرنشيتس ا بزنس فروم انذر اند ذات ويل برينج بيبل تو يو ات ويل اتراكت مور بيبل لان الناس راح يشوفون شغفك راح يشوفون وات يور باشنت اباوت اند ذي ويل سبورت اي ثينك ذاتس ذاتس ذا بيوتي اوف اور كوميونتي صح اند اند يعني يبي له يعني رننج اور اوبريتنج ذا اف ام بي بزنس يبي لك مقاقع يو هاف تو هاف يعني بالك طويل سبيشلي نوينج Yeah, having so much interest in your product or your brand that uh, yeah, um, that makes it basically bulletproof, you know, that you can run anything, whether it's social media, whether it's, you know, uh, running the recipes, whether it's anything, but in having so much interest in your project. Exactly, I agree. Perfect, thank you. Um, Fajr, if you don't want to talk about this, you don't have to, but we're all extremely curious about your mukbang hobby. <laughs> Um, can you please elaborate on that interest? Well, uh, I'm a huge supporter of uh, Fajr Eats. I mean, because we're all going to eat the food. All you have to eat. Fajr Eats is a funny story. Uh, because I've been in food for so long, uh, honestly, my family is... My family loves the food. My dad is a person who loves food. 
uh, my grandmothers are both Persian فيعني الأكل الإيراني والأكل يعني عامة ببيتنا وايد مهم وايد من وإحنا صغار ف يعني I've always had a strong relationship with food من من بيتنا و uh, I got into it after after uh, college فكنا نصور الحين سوشيال ميديا يعني I would just take selfies eating the food عندنا tastings 24 ساعة uh, being on a diet is so difficult from we need to talk afterwards ف يعني كل يوم عندنا 2 to 3 tastings البنات يدرون Uh, وكلنا ثلاثتنا كل يوم اللي يقول لنا وي وونت يور جوب وبليز عزمونا على التيستينج وتكفون انتم شنو قاعد تسوون وات از ذس جوب ذات يور دوينج از يو جست ايتينج اول دي ف ذاتس هاو ات ستارتد يعني ات واز ليترلي جست اس تيكينج فيديوز اوف ايتش اذر ايتينج اي ثينك بيبل ار جست ريلي انتو واتشينج اذر بيبل ايت بيكوز فود از لايف يعني يو نو ترى واحنا زعلانين واحنا مستانسين واحنا مسافرين واحنا بروحنا واحنا مع احب يعني الناس اللي نحبهم our families and friends there's always some sort of food going on it's a form of communication اي uh, exactly ف uh, this gathering around the table and eating and talking uh, is really amazing to me yeah. يعني it's it's just great it makes some it makes a person feel really good right you know Uh, I was sitting with a friend one day, and actually Mark from 2.48 a.m. Mm. We were just talking, and he said, يعني, I think you should have an Instagram account. Sami Fajr Eats. I said, okay. And I never posted anything. يعني. I, social media. يعني. Working in food, social media is very important. For I, يعني, when you do it for all these different restaurants, you don't really focus on يعني, your own personal ف يا and then one day we I was just talking to another friend of mine Khalid Dashti from mm-hmm. he also has uh, Kuwait food ف uh, we were talking actually about uh, collaborating for something in Ramadan or and uh, he كنا قاعدين بالدوام وقال لي تعالي خلينا ناخذ بريك نتغدى we talk about it فوديت سندويتشتي كنت اتذكر I had a sandwich from Jia mm-hmm. the chicken avocado And I took it with me and بدينا نسولف. كان يقول لي ايش رايك تفتشين اللايف وتاكلينها؟ خلينا نشوف شنو يصير. And that's what happened. And the uh, response was really amazing لان it's a form of mar- it became a, a form of marketing yeah. out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, we, we don't talk on these videos, we don't do anything, we just eat. Right. Uh, part of it is I want everyone to be comfortable eating. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and uh, a big part of it is to just be comfortable eating in public or wherever you are. Uh, but another part of it became, yeah, people were attracted to this. People were asking us non-stop where that sandwich was from. بعدين سويناها حق مطعم. It was my sister's restaurant, Oma's Noodles. Kalit uh, noodles and. For a couple of days after that, the sales actually يعني, changed and there were people coming in and buying the noodles I ate. Why? You know, Ma, you were just eating it. Maybe Fa- you eat in a really nice way. Maybe you chew the things in a nice way. Oh, well, <laughs> that's a big part of it, Tara. Man, Tara, it's a whole <laughs> different industry. On the idea, the Koreans and Asians that they started doing this thing. Yeah, they did. You can know it. اكثر بهالشيء يعني اتس اتس ادكتيف اتس ادكتيف ذا ساوند اند ذا اكت اند يعني يعني يو جيت تو نو هيومن بيهيفير ا ليتل بيت مور اي يوز تو واتش ذا فيديوز ومرتي تكره الصوت شي هيتس سو ماتش بعدين قمت اسويه بالبيت وي اكشلي كول ذا نودلز مكبانج الحين بس تقول لي ابي مكبانج ف انا قاعد يقولون لي روح اشتري لك مايك وي ونت تو هير ذا ساوند هذا يكون النكست ديفلوبمنت بس اي اتس 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 ا ريلي نايس ثينج ذات هابند ات ستارتد اوف از ا جوك اند ات ات اكشلي بيكيم ا ليتل سمول كوميونيتي وي اول توك اباوت فود وير اوبسست ويز فود وي تراي نيو كونسبتس وي لايك تو ترافل اند الحين عندي ناس فروم اول اوفر ذا وورلد سندينج مي ريكومنديشنز حق كل مكان بالعالم وحده تقول لي فجر انا بالجامعه اقعد بروحي فلما اتغدى افتحك ونتغدى مع بعض يعني اي هاد انذر بيرسون كم تو مي اند تيل مي لايك 
ليسن ثانك يو سو ماتش انت صدق تشوقين بالاكل انا عندي ايتينج ديس اوردر وما اقدر اكمل اكلي فلما اشوفك تاكلين اي اكشلي فينيش ماي بليت اند اي ايت فهذيلا كلها سمول ستوريز ذات ريلي مين ا لوت تو مي اند اي ثينك اتس اتس اميزنج هاو سمثينج يعني سو سمول ستارتد اند خلاص يعني نيكست تايم اف اي سي ماي نيفيو نوت ايتينج ذا ديش اي ويل اي ويل اوبن فجروا هاب يو يا يا يو ويل دو ذا Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, finally, Radia, yeah. can you talk to us more about um, your? You were a lecturer, I believe, yeah, I in Liverpool lecturer, University, Liverpool right? University. About yeah. dietetics. So, yes. can you talk to us more about that? Um, I was and the a transition. Lecturer. Sorry, the transition between being in a place like that in the UK and then how it differed for you uh, in Kuwait. See, I was a lecturer in in Liverpool, but I could say mm, I just tried it. I wanted to try it because I thought. Because I'm explaining the things sometimes in a good way, and I could simplify it and these things, so I could be a good lecturer. Then I started, and I was like, I've been to the room, and I was like, what that girl is looking at the phone? Stop using your phone. And the other day, and you know, the British girls are like, why are you talking to me in this way? So then I noticed, and I know teaching is not in this easy way that I was thinking. It's not just uh, preparing your PowerPoint thingies, going there and teaching the things. It's not. You need to have like more experience to it. I was, I was thinking that maybe I'm too young to be a lecturer. Maybe I don't have the time to be able to do it for the person in Hatta if the person, sorry for saying that, being rude to me, right. ignoring me. And not habits, ha- food habits there must yes. be yeah, extremely they different were, than they here. They were in a really young age. Yeah. Um, can, like the, the, the age is different between us. It was like five, six years old. And I had to do these lecturing things because I was funded by my university to, to do that. So I was, I was I, I supposed to do that. And I was like, uh, no, that's not me. Mm. That's not me. Uh, then it was like, uh, you know, always in, uh, in Middle East, we have the family pressure thing is the world that the human is the English class, but they also the family pressure thing is the emotional pressure and these things. So, yeah, um, I, I've been to Kuwait and I was like, OK, I would try it. If the people didn't like me, then I would go back there. <laughs> <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, yeah, that was successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. So yeah, I started then and I couldn't just stop it yet. Right, yeah. And best of luck to everyone, of course. Thank Is there anything so. else any of you would yeah, like I to add? Yeah, I have a question. Speakers. Go ahead. Elia, I that Middle East people are usually like, you need to be a doctor. You need to <laughs> study medicine. So why your dad was like this much um, open-minded to tell you about these things? Uh, one time I met a uh, uh, film director, Kuwaiti film director. So anyways, we were talking and he wanted, to, you know, when I came back from, from school, فمع الكلام كذي ولا يقول لي آه انت اخوك جاسم قلت له اي ولا يقول لي جاسم شو يشتغل؟ قلت له اركتكتشر ولا يقول لي عندك بعد؟ قلت له اي عندي محمد ولا يقول لي محمد شنو؟ قلت له محمد يشتغل كيميكال انجينير اوكي ولا يقول لي وبعد منو؟ قلت له اختي ولا يقول لي شو تشتغل؟ ولا يقول لي شي وانتس تو بي يعني سايكولوجيست ولا يقول لي ام امك امك شنو تخصصها؟ ولا اقول لها امي شيز انجلش ميجر ولا يقول لي ابوك قلت ماركتنج ولا يقول لي انا اشوف انا اقول عيال يقول انا اشوف يطلعون كذي عيال ف فهم من صغرتنا احنا وي يعني اهالي ما ذي وير نوت ذا كايند اوف بيبل ذات تولد يو نوت اي بالضبط بالضبط ما عندهم ما عندهم هالعقليه ما عندهم هالعقليه يعني امي واز ريز ان سيرتن يعني انفايرمنت ماي داد واز ريز ان سيرتن انفايرمنت And عندهم انه اذا بتحبين الشغله راح تبدعين فيها no matter what sure. literally no matter what Definitely. you're gonna do you know so so ما عنده كان هو ينصح وطول عمره ما كان يقول لي لا كان يقول لي انه بالضبط كان يخلي القرار لي يقول لي انه this is done this way and this is done that way this is right and this is right it's up to you to make the decision فهو لان عنده انه وحتى باي ذا واي ترى هي واز يعني at first when I got my degree ما كان ما كان يقول لي uh, بس ابارنتلي uh, كانوا ناس يونا بالشركه يقول له اوه ولدك طباخ كان يستحي شوي بس ما أوبا. كان يقول لي اي اي لان هي وش كان هل هذا الشيء يخلي اول وقت اول ما تخرجت لان آه. انه شلون انه هو ماسك منصب كبير بكي بي سي وما ادري شنو وشلون فرض بعدين ون داي يولا الكي بي سي اند دي رايت ذيس نيوز ليترز فقالوا لنا نبي نقابلك لان وير انترستد ان يور سان Oh, فا اي فهني ذات واز ذا فيرست تايم اللي اي هي واز فيري براود فيري 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 براود 
انه ليتلي سووا المقابله بيني وبين ابوي يعني ان ذا نيوز ليتر ات واز اول اوفر ذا كي بي سي ف ف فهني فروم ذات بوينت اون ات واز ات واز ا كومبليتلي ديفرنت ستوري يو نو الله يحفظ لك ان شاء الله. And that's how you bypass social stigma, right? You have to take that first step. Of you course. have to be right the beacon. You يعني have to you be have the, to, look, the example you, of. You have to understand the cultural norms for sure. Exactly. You have yeah. to understand them. But that does not mean. You have to navigate mean, them. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You, that does not mean that you have to follow them. يعني you have to respect. And that's one of the major things that I understood. Respect. It, respect is not to constrict oneself. That's When I graduated, true. I opened the restaurants and I had this so يعني, huge ego. Uh, because you know coming back this culinary degree chef ما ادري شنو انه شنو انت تقول لي شلون اطبخ ماي ستيك or يعني مو انت اللي تقول لي انه how not to have your burger done right. in a certain way yeah. to me it was offensive but i had to understand i had to kind of you know respect and then after that i can talk after that i can put but number one thing is understand the culture exactly. and then after that do whatever you want to please and to elevate perfect not yeah. not to break it right Like you, know? you said, you place yourself in it as well to be personable. Sah. Yeah, to be Amir open Amir. to people. Amir, Amir, yeah. Excellent. So, does anyone else have any more questions for our speakers? Go ahead. Um, I want to thank you so much for sharing the the norm uh, like I was just telling my boss about uh, me studying innovation and no one agreed uh, they always like go with the traditional major be safe uh, uh, Kuwait will never know what innovation is or get there even so uh, thank you it was very brave Relax. of you and uh, thank you guys uh, for uh, stepping up the Kuwait food game <laughs> Uh, because it's so typical right now, wherever you go to any restaurant, the menu is almost duplicated in every yeah. single restaurant. Very true. Very true. Uh, it's actually letting us uh, eat out less, best with uh, creative chefs like you, and Isa Bahbani, of course, number one. Um, mm-hmm. You guys are making uh, creativity and innovation in the food industry. حتى لو عندك typical مثلا dish there's always a twist like I, I know like even when my friends مثلا come from abroad I know exactly where to take them لأن من المنيو لي the atmosphere of the restaurant everything is just completely new and that's what Kuwait is all about now like the food capital of the world so you guys are definitely contributing to that and I just wanted to uh, thank you well, thank, thank you, you too kind يعني شوفي um, Uh, I'm not going to talk about myself. I'm going to talk in general about the يعني, uh, restaurant tours such as Isa, um, what Numu are doing and wh- what different people are doing in the industry is just making it easier for other people to jump into the game. Uh, there is always first mover advantage for sure. Yeah. There is always first mover advantage. Exactly. The risk is the major factor, you know, best to, to operate in a, in, a, in, a, in a sector where it's untapped, uh, you have to have extreme guts. really big guts yani when we started our business i took so many bullets i was harassed in my restaurant i was la la fi yani it, it might sound silly but in real in reality if customers they, they don't really understand yani fi wahda qalat li anna anna iza anta wayn tabi tawsalla qalt laha anna i'm i'm a chef yani i want to elevate the dining scene wala tqul li zayn wa badain qalt laha shunu qasdik wa badain qalt laha ana wala tqul li zayn wa badain hada shay tafah wayd But you know, in, a, in a being harassed in front of people doing that in your own, your, in your own home, yeah. you know, you have to have so much passion for your job. Skin, yeah. Exactly. You have, well, it, it, the thick skin, it grew with time. Yeah. But at the beginning, I, I used to, you know, I used to be affected a lot. And I used to go home. It's so hard. Yeah, yeah you don't sleep. And that, that literally goes to any creativity, uh, you know, uh, industry. It's the, it's the same thing. You have to understand, يعني, acknowledge it, and يعني, مثل ما يقولون, translate it into your own work. And that's the outcome. Right, thank you. Thank you for your question. Go ahead. Yes. Um, Culture appropriation is an issue that I often think about, and especially within food. 
So I would like to know just from your perspective, how do you navigate within that issue with when you're creating a menu, for example, or you're looking into opening a new restaurant of a certain type of cuisine, how do you navigate within cultural appropriation with food without being offensive? I told you. Uh, I think from my experience, I always try to tackle this يعني, in, in many ways. Uh, honestly, just being out there and, and seeing all the other concepts and what they're doing and uh, you have to look at your competitors. A lot of these concepts are uh, they want to sell food without really understanding the market or the culture that they're in, right? Actually, I was talking about this with someone. And, uh, why is it appropriate in Copenhagen for the waiter to tell the customer, uh, uh, no, you can't have the sauce that I want? I went to a ramen place. Slurp. Uh, I, I, I got hot sauce. I wanted to get hot sauce with the chicken noodle. But the hot sauce comes with the mushroom noodle. I called the waiter, I got it. I felt انت شنو قاعد تقولين وهو ار يو ويعني وقلت لها او ام سوري انا اسفه انا اسفه ما ابي هوت سوس اتس ريلي جود وكليت وخلصت يعني اف ذس هابنز ان كويت الريبيتيشن مالك خلاص فيرست امبريشنز ار فيري امبورتنت ان ذا ميدل ايست ان سم كونتريز مور ذان اذرز ان كويت اشوا احنا صرنا وايد ملتي كلتشرال نستقبل وايد اشياء Uh, we're more accepting and receptive to a lot of things in the other Middle Eastern countries uh, might not feel as appropriate. But I always tell people, don't be afraid to bring in all these different concepts, uh, whether it's the customer experience, it's not you just going into a restaurant, sitting down, eating and leaving. There's something special, whether the food is being cooked live in front of you or uh, you, need, you need a special key to get into somewhere. Um, Actually, just different things that you can do to the experiences, whether it's a dessert that's being thrown in front of you, uh, literally broken on the table, in which يعني يضيفونه بالمنيو عشان it's attractive عشان البنات يصورون بسنابشات عشان free marketing. فيعني it's it's all connected عرفته. فأنا دائما أقول يعني actually I want to I want to leave بعد with this message and yes it is a saturated market. And there are many risks. One of them is يعني, this. Uh, best with the saturation, now is the time to enter this market. Now, not next year, not in two years, now. And communication is the most important thing. Everyone around you knows something, so don't be afraid to ask for help. يعني, uh, I've known uh, concept owners or people that want to open their own restaurant يروحون بالبروسس بروحهم وبدون ما يسألون for any help ف يعني يطيحون بمشاكل وايد متعبة ف reaching out and communicating is always key يعني me and Faisal are constantly communicating and talking about how we can مثلا the hot dogs on your menu يعني we're talking about how he melts the cheese in it مثلا uh, talking about where to get different plates how to order something online يعني, uh, it's very important in this industry to reach out and talk and uh, يعني, the more saturated it is بالعكس, the, the, uh, the less risk you're going to take because خلاص, everyone around you is doing it you can learn from all the concepts that exist uh, حلو, and يعني, I really advise everyone if they want to get into the F&B field يعني, do it now, sooner rather than later Perfect. Thank you. I'm not sure if you answered your question. But basically, we really like to see other concepts. We like to be in the field. Traveling and just dining in different experiences. That's how you really understand different markets. And then you try to adapt in Kuwait. You have to give what, you have to give what Kuwaitis want. But also give them what you are about. صح هذا ذا بيزكلي ذا ذا ابروبريشن اوف ذا اكزاكت ماركت هني يطبق بالكويت ذا سيم ثينج يو هاف تو اندرستاند وات بيبل لايك وات ذي ديس لايك نيفر نيجلكت ذيم 
بس as a creative always keep it as an 80 20 80 safe 20 creativity مع الوقت shifted يعني one of the first things that I was very uh, offended with in uh, Monday one they were like add fries with sauce add fries with sauce add fries with sauce I didn't want to do that at all at all بس وصلت مرحلة انه اوكي انا ما راح اعاند بس that's هذه القناعة this is the creativity in how can I do something that people like best done in my way ف ف ف سويت يعني لا تقولون حق احد بعد تكرمون يعني بس the fries sauce that I did I'm like I'm gonna put it put it in a bag that looks like a garbage bag but people don't really know that but that's the top seller at the moment it's a jackpot fries so I'm in a jackpot but the whole idea about it and it's يعني sorry to say but the society was garbage uh, you know because they eat so much bad food you know but that was me kind of venting out طبعا ما قلت حق احد عشان doesn't backfire <laughs> next time you go just that you will chance <laughs> نقول نحضرك اقول لهالمره نروح نفضحك عندهم بليز انت ممكن زباله ربع المشكله الحين يضحكون علي تذكر لما تشيز زباله اللي بس اني ويز سو سو اجين بس اي نيفر نجلكتد ذيم اي هاد تو اندرستاند اي هاد تو ريسبكت ذيم اند اتس ان 80 20 ايكويشن مع الوقت خلاص وانس ذي بليف يو وانس ذي ريسبكت يور ورك اتس حتى ايفن اف اتس ان 90% كرياتيفيتي اند 10% سيف سيفتي They will, they will appreciate it. That's, that's the whole equation about it. It's, it's that type of innovation that like, siphons off the, the competition, so to speak, or those that aren't as passionate as you guys are. And that's why you're here. You're innovators, you're creatives in this industry for that reason. Yeah. You're here not just for the money. You're here because it's an artistry. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, so we have time for just one more question. Um, so I know my question is just because you guys touched on the thought when you were talking in terms of the... Um, the health factors that go into the restaurants that you guys are opening up. Um, I see this a lot with my patients now, young or old. I still see that, and you guys know that there's such a huge epidemic of obesity and diabetes and hypertension in the GCC and especially in Kuwait. So do you guys, do you feel that healthy is a way in terms of their menus? Are they trying to incorporate something that's a little bit on the healthier side, even in terms of the way that they're cooking the meat or the options that they have? Of course, it's not the responsibility of the chef in the lifestyle of uh, their customer. But then I was just wondering if you guys are noting, noticing any change in terms of that. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Korean food. So I'm going to Korea to Kuwait. I'm looking forward to your ASMR career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think definitely we were talking about this before we started. Uh, For sure, yeah, and with all the health trends and uh, that are going around, all the different diets, every time we develop a menu, we're constantly thinking about these people. نفس ما قال 80 20، بهال 80 لازم تشوف يعني شلون بترضي أنا ال 20 مالي ما راح يكون في فيجن يعني بس I'm gonna consider them بال 80. طبعا الحين يزعلون منك. فيجن؟ يا. ميخن <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>
people were going on diet with, um, uh, for example, two bar of chocolate or three bar of chocolate, just, just calculating the, the calories. And okay, I'm on 1,000 calorie diet, and khalas, that's it. Now people, when you tell them 1,000, 2,000, or whatever calories, they're asking you about macronutrient. How many gram of protein am I going to receive? How many gram of carb am I going to receive? Am I going to receive enough fiber in my food or not? So people are aware of it. And before, you no know, people were like, um, just calorie things. Now they're thinking bigger of that. Even for kids, yani, مثلاً, when I have in, in, in Numu, when I have kids, um, kids uh, clients, it means that even the kids are going for these things. Even the schools are, are now telling them that you need to be more healthy. And this is a really good thing. And keep in mind that still the, the obesity epidemic is really high. Keep in mind that the still uh, you're seeing uh, like um, a guy like running in Jamaica, okay, like Chris was well, still these, these images are there, yeah, but there are, there are families and uh, they bringing their kids with motivating them to subscribing in company, same as our company, that okay, subscribe, you need to do something with your body in their young age. Yeah, He's 10 and he came. It's a brave new world. And he was like, I want a meal prep, but I don't want to think about what I'm eating. <laughs> you're 10. How, yeah, yeah. Why do you care about what you're eating? Yeah, yeah. yeah for then sure. Yeah. For sure. Yani, basically, the restaurants, it's, it's a trend, as they say. But I, this is the trend that's going to stay. It's, uh, it's more of a lifestyle rather than uh, something that's going to come and go. Um, and a trend in the right direction. Sorry? Well, also a trend in the right direction uh, as well. Exactly, and it's for the benefit of the society. I'm going to about the 10 years old. Again, he's 10. And I remember the time when he's like, oh, and I remember, I'm a 10 market, which is amazing, which is something great. One of you. But look, I'm a lot of mainly. I don't know if there's any vegans here, but they kill me. يعني, uh, but I know, they know in, uh, at the restaurant, I'm going to talk to them, but as a joke, it is something that we do consider in developing the menus. Uh, it is something that we do consider, um, uh, you know, in, in, in creating newer dishes. It is a small market, yes, but there is always a room uh, that we have customers coming in. But that's, that's, I think that's good, so yeah. <laughs> what we try to do is doing something that is. Um, that is not only vegetarian, but something that everybody could eat. Yeah, and we do like there is one dish that we do. Um, it has bacon. You can substitute the bacon, but it's like a Brussels, fried Brussels sprouts with almonds, with uh, uh, with a bit of uh, you know uh, pickled uh, onions, uh, horseradish cream. These are dishes that we create just to kind of please the, uh, the vegetarians if they come in. Uh, vegans, طبعا شوية صعبة, but and in general, it's it's a healthier kind of direction. Uh, towards the, the health trend. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to personally thank you on behalf of Khalijesk and our partners from Zain. Thank you, Faisal. Thank you, Faisal. So thank you Fajid. Thank you, guys. And thank you. Our Rabia. pleasure. Thank you. And thank you, of course, to our audience for venturing out in this weather. Uh, thank you, guys. It's been very productive. Uh, please um, uh, download Zinc app. Uh, which is an app for uh, people like us who are always curious and interested in uh, networking and working with other people. You can uh, book the space. You can book the meeting room if you just want to have a meeting. So uh, it's uh, Zinc Space Kuwait. And uh, please help yourselves with some coffee and uh, sweets. Thank you, guys. <laughs>